Well, welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday of Easter. So good to see all of you this fine day. Um, a little change in weather from earlier in the week, but we uh, embrace it nonetheless. It makes our worth uh, green all around us. It's a, a sign of resurrection indeed. Uh, hopefully you've gone to flcbothel.org and downloaded our bulletin there so that you can follow along and sing along. And uh uh, just participate as you're able, uh, but just know that God is with us in this moment as we offer up our thanks and praise. And uh, for those who didn't know, that uh, last piece that we heard was my nephew, Caleb Berg. Uh, he played all those instruments and provided that music for us, and we're very thankful. So let's now start worship um, as we reflect on the world around us um, and uh, pray for peace and, and stop to all the violence that's going on around us. Our gathering hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen, ELW 377. Herb Brokering 
was a gifted poet, author, speaker, and composer who wrote him, several hymn texts that we have in the ELW, as well as many other songs for both children and adults. While in Germany after World War II, he worked with the Lutheran World Federation's services to refugees. Brokering was a promoter of healing, justice, and peace, leading more than 100 pilgrimages in his lifetime to places in Europe, the Middle East, China, and India. The East German Ministry of Culture presented him with a peacemaking award. This text for Easter uses the same tune as Brokering's hymn, Earth and All Stars which was composed by David Johnson, composer, educator, and lecturer, who was the organist at St. Olaf College when I attended there. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us, and we shall be satisfied. Heal us, and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our canticle of praise, Hallelujah, Jesus Lives, ELW 380.
reading today is from the book of Acts in the eighth chapter. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Word of God, word of life. Blessed spring, where word and sign embrace us into Christ the vine. Here Christ enjoins each one to be a branch of his life giving tree. The summer. Of youth for years, uncertain faith, rebellious tears, sustained by Christ's infusing rain, the boughs will shout for joy again. When autumn cools. And youth is cold when limbs their heavy harvest hold. Then through us warm the Christ will move with gifts of beauty. As winter's last, we breathe our last return to dust. Still held in Christ, our souls take wing and trust the promise of the spring. Christ, holy Christ living tree, be praised for this blessed mystery, that word and water thus revive and join us to Yes, our good friend and organist and music director, Lucy K. Osborne, is helping with this morning's children's message. So, Lucy K., we want to start? Sure. 
Well, I'm here to talk about Lutheran World Relief, and you haven't heard that from me before. Ha ha ha. That's a joke. Okay. It, it's a, a non-governmental uh, agency and organization that focuses on giving um, development and projects and sustainable projects during disaster and relief. It was formed in 1945, right around the time that World War II was over. And I have a couple just short slides here. So it, uh, in Iowa, yeah, the first people that were helping World, Lutheran World Relief were giving 74,000 pounds of lard. Sounds horrible to me, Roger, but they needed it. Yep. And <clears throat> today, Lutheran World Relief is a part of an, uh, an organization called ACT, and it's supported by 25,000 staff members and it gets about 3 billion people involved in its work each year. Next slide. Next slide. This is during World War II again, when Lutheran World Relief sent milk and dried eggs to kids all over the world. And I see it says Ausgaba, so that's uh, probably Germany or Austria. Right, Roger? I think so. And then in Germany, it, there was a, uh, a uh, trains to help uh, displaced people after World War II find places to live. So here they're getting on trains and people are there helping them. So uh, we are really, really, um, involved in, in the making of school kits and quilts and personal care kits and fabric kits at the moment. And I'm gonna show you a school kit, one of the ones that we make. And the people in the congregation help fill these kits, either by donating the supplies or by donating funds. So each kit has four notebooks. David's my helper. Has a ruler, metric and uh, stamp, thank you, standard. Has five pencils, five pens, a box of crayons, a pencil eraser, pencil I mean sharpener, thank you, scissors, and there should be a eraser in here somewhere. I bet it fell out. Well, there should be a school eraser, a little pink eraser, like the ones that we grew up with in this bag. So we have many people in the church and uh, that are making these, and last year we shipped and sewed 384 of these. And where did they go? They went to Lebanon and Georgia and Djibouti last year, the school kids. Not the state of Georgia. Not the state of Georgia, right. So um, today, Lutheran World Relief helps people in East and West Africa, Asia, and the Middle East some of the poorest places in the world, um, they have people that are reaching out to people and helping them to build a better life. You're on, Roger. Thank you, Lucy Kay, for sharing about the school kits and a little history about Lutheran World Relief. And uh, Lutheran World Relief is all about sharing God's love for all people. And um, we work together with not just Lutherans, but other partners. And uh, we want to end poverty and injustice and human suffering around the world. And another item that gets assembled are called personal care kits. And our Deborah Circle at First Lutheran Church makes these personal 
care kits, and they include two bars of soap and a toothbrush, some nail clippers and a comb, and then a bath towel. And then all of those are wrapped up inside of the towel, and then they get shipped out to uh, Lutheran World Relief Warehouse in Baltimore. And then when there's an emergency or a crisis anywhere in the world, then those uh, health kits are, are shipped out, those personal care kits are shipped out to help those people. And along with quilts and school kits and other uh, items. So uh, we wanted to just share a little bit about what Lutheran World Relief does and they do such a great job doing it. And next Sunday for the children's message, we're going to have uh, another special guest who's going to talk about the quilting part and face mask making. So let's close with a prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for bringing together so many people uh, to help make these items, these care kits and school kits and quilts and face masks to help our sisters and brothers throughout the world to help in poverty and to stop injustice and to stop suffering. Help us, Lord, to continue to support this great work. Be with us this week in all we say and do that we may share your love with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, and thank you, Lucy Kay and Roger, for that wonderful message. Uh, grace and peace to all of you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, as we think about Lutheran World Relief, uh, certainly our story takes place in a country that Lutheran World Relief has done a lot of work in, and that's Ethiopia, and uh, and and also in um, in Israel and in Palestine, and especially in Palestine. So there's a connection here in our story. So the book of Acts is a book, um, as one uh, theologian put it, uh, is a book that breaks down walls. It's a book that constantly challenges the common understanding of faith and who's in and who's out. Um, it does so in both small and dramatic ways. Um, one can think about um, the, the, the inclusion of Stephen uh, and his uh, fellow workers in the church, you know, non-Jews, uh, uh, you know, Greek people who who were part of the Christian movement, found leadership in the church. So that's one wall that was taken down. Um, some of you might remember the story of of the dream of of the sheet coming down and God saying, "Eat of these things," and the apostles saying, "No, no, no, I can't eat. This has been forbidden." And God says. I now unforbid it, basically saying this, this uh, prohibition is taken away. Um, certainly the idea around who should be circumcised and who shouldn't is another wall. Well, today's story breaks down a huge, huge wall um, in faith. It, this story um, cannot be um, overly dramatized. This is, you can't, it's hard to think about how big of a move this is for the Christian community to think about who is included in God's kingdom. Now we can imagine this 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 person um, Philip, who um, is starting to tell the good news of Jesus Christ, the, this, this good news that uh, has set us free from the fear of death and sin. Uh, the, the good news of forgiveness of sins um, freely given, uh, the idea that now through uh, our baptisms uh, that we are now included in God's kingdom, God's wonderful kingdom where there will be no more pain, no more, uh, no more tears, uh, no more hurt. And so Philip is enthusiastically preaching this and now um, he's being directed by the Holy Spirit to go down on this road uh, from 
uh, go, go south to the road that go down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So we're heading out to the Gaza Strip. And uh, he's heading it down that way. And what's interesting is we have this aside, the wilderness road. So we're being set up here that there is something really important going to happen, right? As soon as we hear wilderness, we think about uh, Moses and the people out in the wilderness. We think about Jesus being in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights, etc. So there's things that happen out in the wilderness that are really important. And so this is going to be important. And now we get this description of the person that Philip is going to encounter. This, this person is someone uh, who uh, is paradoxical. Uh, he, there's, there's two things being held up here um, that might seem like they can't be a part of the same person. On one hand, he's an extremely powerful, important uh, person in the court uh, in Ethiopia to the queen. He serves the queen probably maybe the second or third most important person in all of Ethiopia. But on the other hand, he's considered as a non-human. He's, he's had his, his uh, genitals taken away, and probably at a young age, and was raised up as a slave uh, to learn particular gifts. And in this case, he learned the gifts of keeping money and economics. And so this, this person is both important and in some ways of thinking doesn't exist. Now in Jew Jewish, Jewish circles, of course, where circumcision is a huge thing, and that's a sign that you are part of the faith, and that this is an integral part of, of, of your identity as a Jew. Well, this eunuch cannot uh, take that step in his faith. He wants to follow the one true God. In fact, he's so passionate about it that he's purchased for himself a scroll of the book of Isaiah. Think about how expensive that must have been at this time and how precious that he would own his own personal copy of the book of Isaiah on a scroll. And yet, when he got to the temple in Jerusalem, the place where he was going on his uh, uh, journey, his spiritual journey, his, his, he's taken a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And it's there that he wants to offer up his sacrifice and his offering to the one true God. And he was not allowed in the temple. Because he wasn't a man, nor in that thinking of that time, he wasn't even a person. This is the Ethiopian eunuch. On his way back home, reading scripture and wondering about his place in the universe. How many of our siblings are in that same place? Where because of bigotry, where because of misunderstanding, that they are not included in, in the journey of faith with their fellow believers. I think about the pain and persecution of our transgendered siblings in the faith. People who so desire to be loved by God and to hear that word of love for them, and yet their transgendered siblings are kicked out of their homes. They're often beaten and, and are part of a large part of the people who are murdered in our country just because of who they are. And so it is. There's nothing new under the sun, and this kind of persecution goes on. It happened for the Ethiopian eunuch, even though he held amazing power. And it ha happens to our siblings even to this day. That because they don't fit some artificial mode 
mold of what it means to be human. They're excluded, persecuted, and all too often killed. And Philip, who's trying to follow the way of Jesus, encounters this man, climbs up into his limo, because I'm sure this was a fancy cart with pillows and comfort. And he speaks and talks and converses and then asks an innocent question. What are you reading? And do you understand it? And the eunuch looks at him and he says, how can I, unless someone guides me? It's a powerful question and a powerful question return. Do you understand what you're reading? How can I, unless I'm guided? It's not because he can't read the text. He certainly could. But we need each other to interpret the text. We need mentors in our life to help in our journey. And so Philip sat beside him, and they're reading that part of Scripture that we now attribute as uh, the, 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 the servant texts of Isaiah, that they point to that one Jesus, the Christ, and Philip began to speak. And he spoke the good news to that Ethiopian eunuch, that foreigner, that non-man, a word of hope, a word of peace, and more importantly, a word of forgiveness and a word of inclusion. So much so, that the eunuch asks the next question. Here's some water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? What is to prevent us from loving our neighbor? How often do we put up artificial walls to dictate who's in, who's out, who, who would I serve and who deserves, right? That word deserves help. On our street, on average, there's three to four people living in their cars, parked out on the street. Sometimes they might have a camper on the back of their pickup, but all too often they're sleeping in their seats. And I know there's people who drive by those cars and look down their noses as if they deserve their plight. What's stopping us from creating a world and a, a, a neighborhood where all have what they need, that the good news wouldn't touch them too? So Philip got down in that water he baptized this eunuch, and when he came out of that water, that eunuch was no longer nobody. He could now claim that all-important truth. I am a child of God. how that must have been good news for this one. How often when we provide that which the one who's walking in faith needs, how often when they are seen and loved and cared for, are we doing the work of God? Whether it's quilts or baptism or words of hope or comfort, or just sitting and being present so that others know that they are seen and loved. 
This world needs us. It needs us to be like Philip, sharing the good news that God does indeed desire us to have food, clothing, health care, you name it, whatever helps us have life. So that these baptisms that we provide through God also is good news. So the good news for us on this day is that we're invited, like Philip, to go down these wilderness roads and to encounter those on the way and offer those words of hope comfort, and more importantly, the, off, the offer of freedom from fear. Amen. Our hymn of the day is, In Christ There Is No East or West, ELW 650. John Oxenham was a British hymn writer who made his home in the United States. The text was originally part of a hymnal titled Songs of Praise. One expert stated that the hymn takes its opening idea, East or West, from Rudyard Kipling's famous lines, Oh, East is East, and West is West, and never the twain shall meet. But actually, the hymn's text is, is, is the antithesis of Kipling's verse, In Christ there is no East or West. It's become a hymn of Christian unity, using Paul's words from Galatians, There is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ. The tune McKee for the hymn came from a spiritual adapted by Harry Burley. Please join me in an affirmation of our faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving Shepherd, you know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. 
strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Gracious shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countrysides and wilderness may abound with life. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Hope-giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire, desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we may lay down our lives for those in need. Help us love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Saving Shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community in our life together and give us vigor as a people of faith. In the midst of challenges and opportunities, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one Risen Christ, cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. I invite you all now to unmute yourselves for the sharing of the peace. The peace of Christ be with you always. Peace be with you. All right. Um, we now enter into our time of offering and announcements. Again, a big thank you to all of you who continue to, to, to support the mission and ministry here at First Lutheran. Um, it's such a great blessing to be a part of a community that, that still remembers uh, the work that we do. Um, if you would like to give today, you can go to flcbothel.org, and there's a donate button there, so you can do that. Um, also, uh, if you can still write a check and send that in, um, and, or you can contact Chris if you haven't yet uh, to set up a direct deposit. So she's willing to help you and walk you through that process. Um, other announcements, uh, uh, your council met, and I think... Uh, was someone going to make an announcement today? Yeah. Oops. There you go. Uh -huh. um, so I just want to kind of follow up. Uh, as we were talking about, we're kind of watching all the counts um, as they're going. And unfortunately, they're not moving in the right direction. Uh, what the council didn't want to do was open up to small groups um, and then have the uh, counties go back to phase two or phase one and then have to shut them down. So at this time, the council has postponed opening things up until the counts go down and stay down uh, because they are, they're even talking now about closing down uh, going back to phase two for King County. So at this time, what the council has approved is we are gonna try and open the office up um, at the beginning of June. Um, and we're still planning on opening up at uh, 
the end of summer for uh, church service, worship service. And we're going to keep an eye on the counts uh, and try and get small groups. It hasn't been wasted. We have a lot of plans in place once the counts are where they're at. Um, so it wasn't, it was a good exercise to go through. And we're looking forward to having those counts down in a sustainable manner because we don't think it's fair to the groups uh, and the messaging to be opening and closing and opening and closing. So right now, until things kind of settle down uh, in March, things were looking optimistic, but unfortunately now in April, uh, we're up over 300 again. So we're at this time, we're going to hold off and we'll review again at the next council meeting in May and see how things are at that time. So, thank, thank you. you for yep. Um, and so, yeah, we're looking at opening the office on June 7th. So the, uh, just to start uh, kind of acknowledging that things are moving in the right direction. So we're looking at that date. So I'm really proud of our council. They had a wonderful conversation and um, just so thankful for, for their diligent work. Uh, and as Johannes uh, pointed out, we have protocols written up and and procedures and everything's in place. So when we're ready to open, uh, we can do so very easily. So uh, very thankful for Johannes and Christy and all the rest of the folks who have helped her, Karen Thomas, uh, et cetera. So Roger, what do you have? Thank you. Uh, we continue to collect gently used uh, household appliances and kitchen utensils and uh, towels, dishware, silverware, utensils, et cetera, for students at Cascadia College for their food pantry. And we'll collect those items through the end of April. So um, if you have some items that you'd still like to donate, we will gladly receive them. Um, please contact me if you need access to the church, I can meet you or if you know uh, that you're able to get into the building. Um, in the hallway across from the nursery is where you'll see the place to put those items. Uh, also, Roger, before you move on, um, so if somebody wanted to buy new things, is that okay? Yes, it is. Okay, just want to make sure. Yeah. And so if, if it, you're so inclined, you can buy some newer, buy new stuff and bring that in. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you, Pastor Berg. Uh, also, this coming week, the Lutheran World Relief in Gathering begins, and uh, First Lutheran will act as a receiving site for boxes of uh, school kits and quilts, and uh, we put those all together then and put them on a trailer to Baltimore's warehouse. Uh, today at 11 a.m., we have our youth group event on Zoom, and we'll be talking about Earth Day and restoring our Earth. That's today at 11 a.m. This afternoon at 3, we have our monthly movie review, where we'll talk about All In, the Fight for Democracy, and uh, a very good movie, great discussion. Look forward to it. Uh, so join us today at three. The Zoom link was publicized with this morning's Zoom links. And then on Tuesday, uh, we have our First Lutheran Church Book Club meeting at 7 p.m. And uh, this month we'll be talking about the book, The Unseen by Roy Jacobson. And Knut Agard is our discussion group leader. So even if you haven't read the book, you're welcome to join us. Great discussion this Tuesday, April 27th at seven. Look for the link tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. And uh, just as kind of a fun note, uh, the next uh, week when uh, we engage in worship, uh, Lucy Kay is gonna unleash the organ. So give you something to look forward to. Those trumpets that were installed uh, will be played and, and it's kind of exciting. It's a, great sound but uh so that organ is put together it sounds great and so next week lucy k will hear your you're you're blowing your own trumpet so to speak <laughs> all right uh let's now continue with worship our offertory anthem is look who gathers at christ's table in this hymn leading into holy communion Look who gathers at Christ's table. We hear that both the weeping and the laughing are welcome to Christ's table. We're reminded that Simon Peter, who three times denied Jesus, is, is there. Saul, who later became Paul, who persecuted Christians and the early church, is there. Perhaps 
You could, you, you could name someone that you would be surprised to see at Christ's table. But we're reminded that Christ's blood was poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. If our name is on the guest list, it is only because Christ's body was given and Christ's blood was shed for us. that they bring some are weeping some are laughing some have songs they want to sing others ask why they're invited burdened by the wrong they've done Christ insists they all are welcome there is Sad stories are repeated in a thousand different ways, but they share one thing in common. They all end in thanks and praise for the host who has invited North and South. this table where all life is fed and blessed. Bring your joy and bring your sadness and prepare to be surprised by the host whose hands are wounded, who will open wide your eyes when he blesses bread and breaks it to the man from above, and then passes wine that wakens in your God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now enter into our Holy Communion service. Um, and I also remind you to join me in saying the words of institution. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, 
that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Deliver us from evil and for, from, for the kingdom, power, and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. I invite you now to share communion This is the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you will put gladness in our hearts, satisfy the hunger still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now receive this blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn, We Know That Christ Is Raised, ELW 449. Based on Romans 6, the first line of this hymn draws heavily upon the ninth verse in that chapter. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The hymn points out the close link between our baptism and the death and resurrection of Christ. In baptism reborn, we share with, East, with Christ an Easter life. John Geyer's text is paired with the tune Engelberg to give us an uplifting hymn to mark our being sent out. <laughs>
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks be to God, alleluia. Thank you.